Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. My name is David Blaine and during today's show we're continuing with our series on the outlook for the year 2011. In the first segment we talked about the outlook for the economy where we see the economy growing somewhere around 3%, although there are some significant risks to this outlook, number one being the European debt crisis, number two being the emerging economies, their central banks raising interest rates to keep their inflation down, and number three is our own Fed, what the Fed continues to do after this round of bond purchasing. If long-term rates go up, there would be some serious risks to the housing market, uh, stock market, and the economy in general. So during this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about our outlook for inflation. We'll talk about uh, our outlook for bonds. Before we do, let me give you our phone number, 252-633-0107. We love to hear from our listeners on 94.1 WNBU as well as Cable TV 10, our viewers in New Bern. If you have any questions or comments on the show, uh, topics you'd like addressed in the future, please give us a call or you can email us at allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. That's allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, go visit us on the web at www.dlblaine.com. You'll find archived copies of the show as well as some other good information. So let's get back into our 2011 outlook. As I've mentioned, every uh, show where we're talking about outlooks and sort of looking into the future is that no one knows what the future is going to hold. The best economists, the talking heads on TV, me, nobody knows what the future holds. What we want to do is give you some information and education on what's going on in the economy, the markets, so that you have an idea of what to expect, uh, knowing that it's the unexpected that will ultimately drive the returns in the market. And so your best defense in that is a good long-term investment strategy, diversified against across asset classes, depending on your particular age and goals. So having said that, let's go ahead and look at our inflation outlook. Uh, I continue to see uh, low inflation for the year 2011. Uh, we've taken a look at the estimates for the CPI. The CPI stands for Consumer Price Index, and that is the most often cited statistic of inflation uh, in the United States. I will, however, mention that the CPI, a lot of the published numbers, you really have to pay attention to what they include. The the main CPI excludes uh, food and energy costs for some unexplicable reason, Uh, is excluded from the CPI number. So you have to uh, keep an eye. You'll hear things such as the overall inflation, the overall CPI, the core CPI, um, different measures. But um, So you really have to know what you're looking at. Um, So we see that the um, inflation ranging from maybe a little under 1% to a little over 1%, you know, maybe 0.9 to 1.2%. Um, from a top down, it could get could get as high as maybe one and a half percent. There are some definite inflation pressures out there. There's some potential things that could cause more pressure for inflation. Uh, there are also several reasons why we don't think it's going to all of a sudden zoom up to you know five or six percent. Uh, number one, there's um, the uh, output gap which means that there is a, a excess of 6% of GDP in output. The excess supply of labor continues to, to weigh on wages and compensation. And as long as those have downward pressure, you won't see inflation come roaring back. Uh, the excess supply of residential and commercial real estate, as we already addressed in the last segment, continues to put pressure on rents, which is one component of the inflation rate. Um, the financial sector as well as individuals continue to reduce debt, whereas free and easy credit creation is usually a spark of inflation. If you go back to the bubble of 2000, the stock market and all the margin debt, and then of course the real estate bubble of 07 and 08, the free and easy credit to leverage real estate um, 
creates inflation. So when you, when you don't have a lot of credit creation, it helps to keep inflation down. The other thing, frankly, in all economics or investing stocks or bonds, a lot of it has to do with the expectations of the participants. And this is why it's so difficult to predict what's going to happen because if people have high inflation expectations, they are going to take actions with their money <clears throat> so as to um, protect themselves from high inflation. And as a result, they actually, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and they create inflation. So for example, if you think there's going to be a lot of inflation uh, a year from now in the autos, you know, you think cars are going to go up 20 or 25 percent and everybody thinks that, well, then everybody's going to go out today and buy cars, and whenever you have high demand like that for a limited supply, what happens? Basic supply and demand, you drive the price up. And what is rising prices? It's inflation. And so you can see how the expectations of the participants in the market, whether it be stocks or bonds or, or something like inflation, is that those expectations actually become part of the formula. And that's why it's so difficult to predict what's going to happen because most of economics boils down to the psychology of, of human beings, which is very difficult to predict. So um, within the inflation, we think fuels and utilities will be um, a large driver of inflation. Food and beverages will continue to go up. We see things like furnishings, recreation, and apparel as actually coming down in price. So that's our outlook for inflation for 2011. We'll continue on this topic when we come back after this short break. For all things money, I'm David Blaine.